Good afternoon, David Hartman, owner of Fantastic Endeavors Travel Agency, here with you to talk about Lake Tahoe and our recent trip to Lake Tahoe, talking about how to do Lake Tahoe in just three days, especially in South Lake Tahoe. We just got back from this last week. So stay tuned. Welcome to the Enjoy the Journey Luxury Travel Show here on a wonderful Sunday afternoon. Appreciate you joining me on this live feed as always like this wherever you're watching it and share it it really does help us out and subscribe to our fantastic endeavors youtube channel and like the channel you're watching on right now so the house show is going to go is going to talk about the itinerary we just did on a recent trip to south lake town with the florida ski council in lieu of a ski trip that we're doing in mid to late january with the miami ski club and then we're going to talk about the destinations we just visited and the activities we did and focus on those. These are things you're going to want to do if you ever go out there in the summertime. Last week's show, my primer last Sunday, I did talk about the popular activities you want to do when you go there. So check that show out if you want to hear about the top things that are popular. Today, I'm going to focus on a few things and talk about what we did during our trip last week, a three-day trip that was awesome and fantastic. So first off, I do want to show you a map of Lake Tahoe and what it looks like and where we were. And then I'll talk about our itinerary and go into the different activities. Got some great videos for you, some great things to show you. And looking forward to having you on today. All right, so let's talk about Lake Tahoe and what it looks like, where it is, and where you can find it on a map. So here's a map of Lake Tahoe. Let me get this maximized for you. So Lake Tahoe is on the Nevada-California border. It is way east on California. If you look up to the upper right, you will see that uh, Reno is the closest airport you fly into. It's a little too far to drive from L.A., but... If you're in Sacramento, it's very close. You're that part of California. Las Vegas, a little longer drive, but the main airport to fly into, main airport to fly into is, is uh, Reno Airport. Uh, we were way down the bottom of the map in South Lake Tahoe, way down the bottom here. And we actually, right where Nevada and California, that dotted line meets, if you follow that through the lake, and that is state line in California. We stayed in the Lake Tahoe Resort. Our friends in our group stayed across the street on the Nevada side where the casinos are. Woohoo! Casinos. And we'll talk about that too. And that's on also state line, but it's on the Nevada side. Literally, you walk down the driveway of our resort, which is the state line. At the end of the driveway is a doorway to Harris in a casino, <laughs> even though you're walking on California, which is pretty amazing. So that's Lake Tahoe. Our trip was focused on South Lake Tahoe. And next, I want to share with you our itinerary. But again, the best way to get there is to Reno, Reno Airport, about an hour and 15, hour and a half drive, depending on the conditions. You come through the north and then you drive to the south. South is where it's at as far as, to me, summer activities. And if you want that balance of like peacefulness, but also casinos, because you can stay on the California side and then... Uh, you know, partake all the luxuries of the Nevada side. Okay, so our itinerary this trip was a three-day itinerary in South Lake Tahoe. And we arrived on Sunday midday. And right away, we are Lake Tahoe Resort on State Line where you saw it. And we asked someone, hey, where do you go? This is important for you guys to realize that if you're there on a summer day or a mild winter day, you want to see the water. Right down behind Harvey's, follow the state line border there, down this street that Harvey's is on, you hit a beautiful beach park. It costs $25 to get in, but there's an awesome bar there called Beach House. And I did a live feed there on my personal David W. Hartman Facebook feed, so follow that. It's a public feed. You don't have to friend me if you don't want and check that out, uh, and, and you're right on the beach, and that's a very short walk right from state line. So even though you feel like you're far from the water, really not, you can also walk farther down the main route road there. I think it's 140 uh, to the east. They also have scooters there. So scooters are, are very prevalent if you're into that lime scooter thing in the summertime, obviously. So that was our first afternoon, and then we had a meet and greet at night at Lake Tahoe Resort, and that was it for the first day. 
Second day, you know, because we were a familiarization trip about our upcoming trip in January for the Florida Ski Council, we had some meetings in the morning, and then we went on the Dixie Queen, which is an amazing riverboat ride from Zephyr Cove to Emerald Bay in South Lake Tahoe and back. And that's a pretty much a solid half-day activity. And then we had a dinner at night at State Line Brewery. The next day, more morning meetings for the trip leaders. Uh, and then we did the Heavenly Mountain activities, which I'm going to emphasize, Heavenly Mountain Gondola, and then the Tamarack area, the basin. And then we took a short break, and then we had dinner that night at Kalani's in Heavenly Village, which is phenomenal. And the next day was departure. So that was our three-day activity. I'm going to focus on things that you need to do if you go through the summertime to emphasize. I think a lot can be done with that Harvey's neighborhood for a half day. That beach house bar you could have hung out with for a very long time. There's another bar called Base Camp, and north-south is the bar behind Base Camp Hotel. Fun hangout. So when you first arrive, don't get stuck in the casinos unless you want to. You can get out and about and enjoy your nice day. So that, that's just a, a taste of our three-day itinerary, something to help you guys out if you ever go for a long weekend. And then I'm going to show you in our videos, if you want to get out on the beach in the public parks, Zephyr Cove is a fantastic place to be not too far off of where we were in state line. So that's what I want to go into next is our activities. Talk about going on the Dixie Queen because that was our first real big activity. I do appreciate the Florida Ski Council, Winter Ski and Sports, Mike and Sherry Agnos, Sandy Gaudet, all the organizers. They're our wholesalers. This is as a travel agency. I was not involved in this. I'm a volunteer and a trip goer. Uh, Bonnie Barnes, my producer, is running the trip for my ski club. Ten other clubs are doing trips there. If you're interested, it's January 22nd to 29th, 2022. And you can find out more information on FloridaSkiCouncil.com and find our club near you. If you want to join Miami Ski Club, go to MiamiSkiClub.com in the trips in the page. Again, nothing to do with me and my agency. This is something I'm attending that I'm looking forward to in January. And I got to tag along and enjoy South Lake Tahoe. So that, then... I want to now show you some videos of our trip. And I got a lot of good interaction with our team, a guy named Larry on the trip, some other people on our trip. And, you know, I'm here in Emerald Bay right behind me. This is the things you want to experience. This cruise we went also runs in the wintertime, like three days a week, two days a week. It really runs every day in the summertime. And this is just a fantastic time. So the first video I'm going to show you is our boarding area. The reason to show you this and show you the detail of this cruise is there's different levels of experience you have. The first is the beach itself is a park. There's a long line to get in. If you want to do a par move, if you come from South Lake Tahoe, everyone's coming from the north. He just pulled in the, the, the exit. Just pull right in, big old bus, 55-person bus. It was awesome. Awesome bus driver. Man, a lot of people on board. Comments already coming in. Hey, hey, Emily Murphy's out there. Emily, you're coming up in this. You're coming up in some of these videos and pictures. So, guys, stay tuned. About a half hour show today. Got a lot of content to share with you from this trip. We had a great time, and the intention of this show is to share with you what do you can do in just a few short days in Lake Tahoe in the summer. Obviously, if they're in the winter, you can always ski, and obviously, you can always gamble whenever you go there. But these are the things you can do in South Lake Tahoe, outside of the resorts that are, I think are fantastic experiences that I'm selling you on right now. If you're new to my channel, new to my show, what am I about? I'm about inspirational travel. We cover all things worldwide that I believe you should share our updates worldwide about travel. And today we're sharing about South Lake Tahoe, the tallest alpine lake in the country in USA and the second deepest lake in the country behind Crater Lake. So there's a little trivia for you. So first up is a video of Zephyr Cove aboard the Dixie Queen coming up right now. David Hartman here in Lake Tahoe, Zephyr Cove, Western side, Nevada side, heading out here, beautiful August day. With my man Larry, hey Larry. Going on the Dixie Queen. Just checking out the area. Look at this line of people. Don't worry, the boat. Hey, wave everybody. This is our group, Florida Ski Council. Here on a fam trip for a big ski trip here. Foreign skiers coming up in January, late January of 2022. We're doing a little excursion today in this August beautiful day during our trip. 
heading out from Zephyr Cove, going to Emerald Bay on the Dixie Queen. Stay tuned. So that's Zephyr Cove, a great park in itself. And also, if, if you go there, plan on spending some time on the beach. We didn't have the time in our schedule because we were there working and inspecting. But go there in the morning, enjoy the beach, and then board the Zephyr Queen. They board multiple times a day. And as, you, as I say in some of my videos here, at nighttime, they have a, a whole second floor, which I don't show in these videos, that has a band stage. They have a band. They really rock it up. One year, Miami Ski Club, Florida Ski Council in general, all the clubs, went and took a bus around to Squaw Valley, home of the 1960 Winter Olympics, which is on Lake Tahoe. And they skied Lake, uh, sorry, Squaw Valley, and then took the boat back and partied it along the way, which is awesome. And then took a bus back from Zephyr Cove. Really fun time. So I do want to shout out to my friend that are watching. I did reach out to him and say, yeah, Emily, she was on our trip. She's coming up in some of the pictures and videos. Stay tuned, Emily. This is your five minutes in the sun. And she says, woohoo. So I invited all my friends that were on our trip, met a lot of new friends there, like Amalie, and really fun time. Florida Ski Compel is a, is a co congregation of 16 ski, snow ski clubs in Florida, believe it or not. Because if you want to travel, you need to be organized, and we have to travel to ski. And a lot of these clubs are over 50 years old from the Miami Ski Club. The Florida Ski Council itself, uh, the Council of Clubs, is nearing 50 years old. Why are these trips so important? Because when we travel together, we can always travel on our own. Like I led a Park City trip in 2012 that was just on our club, and there's a 35 people fun time. When we travel together, it's like four to 500 to 600 skiers in the mountain together, parties together, uh, crazy shorts in the mountain, uh, races. It's a really good time. And if you guys are skiers, I highly recommend you join us January 22nd to 29th, 2022 in heavenly right where a lot of this footage was filmed on to the next video from uh, the dixie queen let's talk about the top deck thank you i was busy getting footage and taking pictures for producer bonnie my friend larry and his wife deborah they got the greatest seats right at the bow when everyone else set out by the back because when we started moving this is where you wanted to be and check out this video introduced to my friend larry lawrence gray hills retired dentist he's a he's a character and he appears a, a lot in my videos coming up because he's phenomenal on film so check it out right now dixie queen top deck david hartman here owner of fantastic never try agency live from lake tahoe we're on the dixie queen 2 sailing the beautiful waters we just left zephyr bay and we are cruising along and i'm here with you guys showing you a wonderful time here on a beautiful August day on Lake Tahoe. Look at this, it's gorgeous out. This is the second deepest lake in the US and the highest alpine lake. Look at it, it's gorgeous. Had a little bit of smog because of the wildfire in California. Today's been our clearest day. You can see the whole lake today and the water is crystal clear blue. 200 foot vertical visibility, the clearest lake in the country. I'm here with my friend Larry. Here we go, Larry. From hey, the Palm how's it going, Beach, Dave? From the Palm Beach Gator Ski Club, buddy. Larry, Larry Grayhill's here. I'm a customer of Fantastic Endeavors. And <laughs> Dave will put together the best trip for you, you can imagine. Thanks, so, thanks for the plug there. But why, why are we here? Why are we on a Dixie Queen today? This is a Florida Ski Council um, site inspection for our winter trip to Lake Tahoe. Awesome. Yeah. Because we're here, because we're coming back and bringing in over 400 skiers, maybe 500. Come January, January 22nd, 29th, 2022. If you're watching this feed wherever I post it and you're interested and you're in Florida, go to FloridaSkiCouncil.com and choose the club that's closest to you. If you're in Miami, uh, go to Miami Ski Club. And what's your domain for your I was just going to say it's a Gator Snow Ski Club. Palm, Palm Beach Gator Snow Ski Club. Very good. Thank you, Debbie, for the correction. <laughs> It'll come up either way. Thank you, Larry. We're going to show these guys the ship. Thanks, Dave. Show you where the bar is and stay tuned. So here we go. This is the Dixie Queen 2, and we are cruising along MS Dixie 2. Look at that. Woohoo! Many excursions you can do. This does run in the wintertime, many less days. Runs every day jam-packed here in the summertime. 173 people max on the top level. Uh, there's a bigger lower level, so there's probably four people on board right now. Here's the top bar. There's a bar on the lower level. Nice selection. They have amazing $10 drinks. I'll show you guys right there. 
Hey, hey! More Flow Ski Council. That's a Fort Lauderdale Ski Club. If you're on Fort Lauderdale, check out their trip. So we're all coming here. I think over 10 clubs, January 22nd, 29th. So that was a cutoff real quick there, but that's the top deck of the Dixie Queen 2. And that's, give you an idea how big this boat is. Max occupancy on top is 179. And then there's a whole second deck indoors with a, with a band stage and then a little bit outside standing area. Phenomenal experience. I'm going to show you some more videos from this boat ride to show you what you can experience both either on this trip or itself by land. Because we sail, the highlight is you sail straight across Lake Tahoe on the map I showed you to Emerald Bay, which is just a gem of the area that I didn't know about. Something you don't experience in the winter. Because I was in Lake Tahoe in 2008 on a ski trip with the Miami Ski Club, with the Florida Ski Council, of course. Because we're there every, usually once every six, seven years at Heavenly. We need mountains that really can support a big group, and Heavenly is one of them. So now I want to show you what it looks like when you enter right here behind me, Emerald Bay. So check it out right now. Let me get my label up. This is the entrance to Emerald Bay. And this, this you can experience by boat, by boat charter, or by land. When I show you the second video, you'll see there's a lot to see in this place. Emerald Bay, Lake Tahoe, coming up right now. We are back at Emerald Bay here on Lake Tahoe. Our journey on the Dixie Queen 2 continues. This is beautiful. A little shower of water. Now you see the real crystal clear blue turquoise water of Lake Tahoe. This is more of a safe harbor on the northeast side of the lake on the Nevada side. And everyone's now stood up. They've had their drinks. They're going to check out this wonderful, beautiful scenery here in Emerald Bay. There's our captain. I'm sorry. I have a picture with him. He's awesome. Mind what? Pardon? Pardon me, Debilicious. Somewhere we're going to turn around, hope somewhere. I think it ends soon. But look at these mountains. We don't see this in Florida. Florida? The only thing you see in Florida is the dumps. Yeah, so that that's an idea of how beautiful that place is. I mean, Emerald Bay is an interest. I love uh, Jen's comment there. Uh, yes, this is more beautiful than Florida. It's, it's all your opinion. So that's just an idea of what this place is about. Next up, I want to show you. You actually cruise. I thought we were going to a channel. I wasn't sure where we are going when we entered here. Next, I want to show you the end. And on my show last week, I talked about 15 activities you can do. One of them was called Vikings Home. Vikings Home. I want to switch my feed here and talk about it a little closer. Vikings Home is uh, just a beautiful castle built in the late 1920s by a Norwegian queen. And this is a beautiful castle you see at the end of this video here. And you can visit that by land. It's actually a UNESCO site that you can go visit. And they actually built a tea house on top of an island. All that's left is a foundation, which is a big place to go whether by boat and hang out and take pictures. And I'll show you that by video on both. So here is the main west side of Emerald Bay where our boat went in and turned around. I'm impressed our big boat could get in there and turn around and do this. But check it out right now. We are back at Emerald Bay on the north side looking towards the exit. A lot of Scandinavian history here. we got a beautiful island with a rock castle on top. And on the other side is Viking Home. There's Larry. Woo! We're doing a movie here. Ooh, oh, yeah. Catching you live. This is Safe Harbor back here. People are just hanging out. He's doing his YouTube channel. Uh, I'm just doing some recording. Check out the scenery. And back here, we'll show you the actual <clears throat> castle I mentioned on my show. Pardon me. It's back here. 38 Room Mansion, built 1929. They actually used a rock from behind the castle. Right there in the distance is the castle. And that's one of the places you can visit here and tour. Let's come here and hang out in Emerald Bay. There it is. The Vikings home. Built by a Scandinavian heiress. 1920s, 1929. I'm showing you beautiful Emerald Bay. Hey! <laughs> now we're going to get a close-up of this rock island here. And I believe they used some old rock in this castle part of the wind. So see the castle on top here. 
considering the family owned this part of the bay, they probably built that too, I believe. More of a play area for their kids. So somewhere to hang out and chill out. Oh, wind has just picked up, makes us cooler. And then we're gonna exit there and head back to our port down on the Nevada side on the southern, western side, southern eastern side of the lake. For now, we're chilling, enjoying Emerald Bay. Gorgeous. It's been the summertime this day, boaters hang out. Fantastic. So that gives you an idea of the highlight of our trip on Dixie Queen 2 that and the people and the drinks at the bar was hanging out in Emerald Bay. That's a really, they, they come in there, they do the whole cruise around, right around Vikings home. That structure on top of the island was the tea house. Now it's just a foundation you can go and check, hang out. I'd love to hang out there in the 30s and 40s when they own that whole place. Not much is going on. Really beautiful piece of place on the earth and really highlight of South Lake Tahoe. I wanted to share with you guys. It's worth checking out. And again, you can go to Emerald Bay by land and obviously by boat. A lot of boat charters, smaller boat charters, private charters. I saw them going in there. Once I saw advertising, like, hey, I saw that boat entering the channel we were exiting. So really check that out. I now want to switch gears and talk about where we hung out all week because we were just a walk away from Heavenly Village and Heavenly Mountain Ski Resort, one of the biggest ski resorts of the South Lake Tahoe. Tahoe is a ski destination. I've been talking about a lot of summer activities because it's my first time there to share my experience and sell them to you guys why you need to go there now, this summer, why things are a little quieter. And I tell you, this is also a phenomenal ski destination. Again, Squaw Valley on the northwest side of Lake Tahoe, 1960 Olympics. It was a cool when they stole it. Every event was held right there. Very famous Olympics. And then they have Heavenly, Kirkwood. Uh, you have North Star in the north. I mean, you can go on and on and on, all the different mountains there are there. There's so many mountains. Truckee, the town to the north that serves a lot of ski areas. My area, South Lake Tahoe, it's all about Heavenly. There's a lodge, two lodges on the Nevada side, one lodge in the California. And then there is just the village with the ski lift walking distance from my hotel, uh, Lake Tahoe Ski Resort. If you're at Harvey's or Harris, also fairly close walking distance too. Takes you right up the mountain to the Tamarack Basin. Then from there, you can ski down or go up farther up the Tamarack Chair and go up to the top of the mountain. So now I'm going to share with you uh, videos we took at the observation deck and also uh, our experience up there on the gondola in the summertime. And at the top, I have a photo gallery of all the amazing summer activities they have at the top. So this was our day two. Uh, Dixie Queen was our day one primary activity. And then day two was basically Heavy Mountain, the gondola, and the activities at the Tamarack Lodge Basin is what I call it. They have so many activities I'll share with you after you go through these videos. So first off, I want to talk about the gondola. A great time, so check it out right now. Riding the Heavenly Gondola in the summertime from Heavenly Village on State Line, California in South Lake Tahoe. We are here at Heavenly Gondola, beautiful Lake Tahoe. Look at the view. That's the lake. On the right are the casinos in Nevada. Our hotel is just left of Harris. We're here with the Florida Ski Council Group. Say hello, everybody. Hey! hey. hey. Where's the party? Party animals. <laughs> Yeah. We're doing our scenic gondola ride up to the top of the gondola station. Now the top, we're going to do a coaster ride. So what do you think, Larry? You excited? Oh, I just can't contain myself. <laughs> <laughs> he was born excited. <laughs> we're doing a quick, quick look in for you guys with this little video to show you the beautiful view. Hey, so that's a short little teaser of the Heavenly Gondola riding up the mountain. There is a ticket fare to go up the mountain that you pay down below. It's a scenic uh, touring ride. You're not skiing in the summertime. Their ski season is very finite because uh, that elevation there where we stayed is 6,200 feet. But before you know it, you're at 10,000 feet. And the gondola takes you up the mountain to where the existing lodges are. Uh, not to the lodge itself, the, the Tamarack's new. From there, you can ski to the California side, Nevada side. It's a big, it's a big thing there that you straddle the California-Nevada line while skiing. Uh, that only matters down below when you're either at you know, drinking a beer, can walk outside, or can't walk outside. Obviously, on the Nevada side, you can do what you want, 
walk outside of the beer and gamble. California's more strict. When you're on the mountain, it really doesn't matter. There's just different lodges. It's pretty neat. It's, it's really a great place to ski. has a lot for everyone. has a lot of terrain for snowboarders and skiers. And I tell you, I've now learned it's a phenomenal place to visit in the summertime. And thanks to me, I will brag a bit here. We are going up the mountain. There's a substation for the Martin Walking Trail and their observation deck. And no one was getting out. And I saw this view that you can only stop on the way up. So we'll take this gun, like get off on the first stop. If you see a line coming back on, don't worry about it because most everyone gets off. And everyone's like, don't get off. Look at the line. Like, I'm getting off. You guys can stay on my gondola. I'm getting off. My group of five people and me followed, and we had a wonderful time hanging out with Tamara, the guide, seeing these amazing views, seeing these back hiking trails. And hiking is a big part of some activities there. So check it out right now. This is the Heavenly Observation Deck. The first stop, don't miss it. Get off when you see it. Don't worry about the line here at Heavenly Mountain Gondola. In Lake Tahoe, David Hartman, owner of Fantastic and Ever Club Agency here on the way to the top. How's it going? This is the Heavenly Gondola. It was right down there to the Heavenly Village. Our hotel is just left of those high rises there. That's Harrah's and Harvey's Casinos. Just left, let me get through here. Just left is our resort, the lower building there next to the green tower closer to us. Is Lake Tahoe Resort, and then just next door is the gondola station. <clears throat> we are here in Lake Tahoe. David Hartman, owner of Fantastic and Ever Club Agency, here on the way to the top. How's it going? This is the Heavenly Gondola. It was right down there to the Heavenly Village. Our hotel is just left of those high rises there. That's Harrah's and Harvey's Casinos. Just left. Let me get through here. Just left is our resort, the lower building there next to the green tower closer to us is Lake Tahoe Resort. And then just next door is the gondola station. <clears throat> we are here on the Marlin Overlook. It's a 360 little path walkway gated available in the wintertime. If, if there's not too much snow, you stop off en route and have a little walk around. You can't ski from here. You just walk around. Here's our group talking to the guide. And great views of the lake, a little hazy today. There are markers showing you what's out there. It's a station on the way to the top station of the Heavenly Gondola from South Lake Tahoe in State Line, California. So we're on the south side, and there's the lake. And then yesterday we went from Zephyr Cove in the distance on the right and took the Dixie Queen 2 boat ride across the lake to Emerald Bay, which you can't see on the left over here. And this is all South Lake Tahoe on the California side. Nevada side is over there. And the unique thing over here is you could stand on the state line. And these people right here, part of our group, getting informed. Here we go. Here's the state line. They were blocking the sign. So that sign right there represents the state line between California and Nevada. So you could stand right here and straddle the state line like I'm doing right now. You're joining us too. Fantastic. More to come here in Heavenly Mountain, Lake Tahoe. So that's the observation deck. Don't miss it on the Heavenly Gondola from Heavenly Village in South Lake Tahoe in State Line, California. It's the first stop. There's no stop on the way down, so take advantage of it. They do charge you for each ride, so that's your one chance. And it's a Martin Trail. If you're into hiking, you can hike from there. There's a lot of trails. We had a set activity that day, the mountain coaster, and we had to get back by a certain hour. So we didn't do much hiking. It was kind of hot, but a lot that can be done there. Next up, the, our group was talking to Tamara, a guide, and she was wonderful enough to give us an interview, which is coming up right now. Pardon for the video hookup there. I had to start my video over again. There's some changes to my platform I'm still getting used to. I will say this. You saw the view. Normally, you can see the entire lake from up there. There's famous ski pictures coming down a trail called the Gun Barrel, a famous mogul trail. You can see the lake. That's not the view we had from up top, but the air quality was supreme. And so there's a wildfire called the Dixie Wildfire on the California side that's causing a lot of haze. It was a lot worse in Reno where we were overnight before coming Lake Tahoe. As of right now, this summer, it's, just, it's only a minor factor you're not going to get the amazing views, but check out my background here because that was our view from Dixie Queen. It was a 
beautiful quality day. Had a little more haze the next day, but nothing terrible. You're just not going to see the whole entire lake. Get some great comments. Emily Murphy, my new friend on the group, is Emily, your pictures are coming up. You were in the video. And uh, thank you for joining the feed today. And Janice Spivak, she says, beautiful. Woohoo. And, and she says, Mimi, ha, Emily, you're famous. And awesomeness indeed. Thank you, Emily, for joining us on that gondola ride. And because you joined us, you got to experience the observation deck. And the rest of our group didn't. One group yelled out, Larry, no, don't get off. Look at the line. Because like 10 people waiting to get back on because it's a substation if you've ever been on a gondola. By the time we came back, I, I, I'll, there'll be in a picture later I'll show you. There was no line. So don't worry. Get off at the substation. Yes, it was a great idea to get off. So thank you very much, Emily. On to the tour. This is Tamara. She was, she is awesome. Uh, they have guides. Uh, honestly, a lot of their job is preventing people from jumping off the rail <laughs> for real. Um, but most of it is to educate you on the area, why you're there. And they're stationed out an area of this wonderful, beautifully built observation deck that does have a way to uh, go downstairs and hit, hit the hiking trails. The Martin Trail, very famous trail is there. I do appreciate them building this gone to a place that had access to more hiking trails and to where it ends up. So this is Tamara. Wonderful interview with her about why it's important to stop at the Heavenly Observation Deck. David Hartman here, owner of Fantastic Endeavor Trevency, here with Tamara from Heavenly. Tamara, how are you doing today? I'm doing how are you? Fantastic. So where are we and why is this important? Why should people stop here on the way up the gondola? So we are at the observation mid-deck, 9,123 feet above lake level, or sorry, at elevation, not above lake level, 3,000 feet uh, above the lake. Uh, it's about a two mile ride up the gondola and what you will see on a normally non-smoky day is you should be able to see the whole basin. You should be able to see all the way up to Mount Rose, down to the Carson Valley, and all the way over to Desolation Wilderness. It's Fantastic. beautiful views that you cannot get from many other places around the lake. And stopping here is part of the lift ticket to go it up. It right? is part of the lift ticket. It is included, and it's definitely a must-do. Make sure you visit it on the way up because it's not available on the way down. I saw that. Most of our group didn't stop and try to stop us. I said, I'm stopping here. Absolutely. Whenever the gondola doors open, you get out. There's something to see. Well, thank you, tomorrow. I'm going to pan away and show them the view real quick, Absolutely. and this is why she's here. And you're here just educating people, right? I am here to educate, answer questions, make sure people don't uh, jump off the rails. Excellent. And there's the view. Yep. Right now, you can see as far as Emerald Bay. And unfortunately, we have some haze due to the Dixie Fire, uh, which has burned most of Plumas County. So that's the only thing that's in our way of the view. Excellent. Well, I appreciate your help today. We're going to enjoy the view. All right. So must stop here on the Heavenly Gondola. That was Tamara. She's awesome. As she said in the first video I did that you saw, uh, Emerald Bay, where we sailed the day before, was on the left. That was the farthest you could see. Still a great view. But, man, they have people like that at uh, different chair stations around that. It's, it's actually a circular observation deck. And the big thing was the news before we went out there, and, and, and uh, thank you. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Amalay, for reminding me. Uh, chipmunks have the plague out there, like bubonic plague, which was eliminated 100 years ago, is back, and the chipmunks have it. Uh, we actually were walking around, and I saw a chipmunk on the platform running down a tree. I tried to snap a picture. He was too quick. So, yes, Amalay, chipmunks <laughs> were around, but don't play with them. It's actually the ones in the mountains supposedly are fine because the altitude. It's the one on the lakeside supposedly have the plague. I'm like, this is... The, the article was just bizarre, like the plague is back and chipmunks. So, hey, you never know. The joys of travel. Next up, I do want to talk about the activities um, of when you get up top. I didn't take too much video up top because we were on a chairlift or on a mountain coaster or in a lodge. There wasn't much to video from where I was. I did take a lot of great pictures. Check out my Instagram, David W. Hartman, all one word or my personal Facebook feed, David W. Hartman. They're public pictures if you don't want to friend me. And check out all the photos I posted the last few days of our trip. And I do want to share a few with you right now because the top of the gondola is just partway up the mountain. It's a basin. I call it Tamarack Basin. That's the lodge they built up there. It didn't exist until they built this gondola, and they built chairs up from there. But they also built a number of activities. There's snow tubing in the wintertime. And then in the summer... There's all sorts of rope courses, hiking. Uh, there's a climbing a wall and then a mountain coaster. And then you can ride other 
chairlifts like the Tamarack Express. And that was a lot of fun. And I did post a small video of there on my Instagram feed this week. So check that out. So I do want to share with you first this photos, and then I'll talk about uh, the activities that you can do up there. And check it out right now. So here's my photo album from the top of Heavenly Mountain Gondola and all the activities around that you could do in the Tamarack Basin. And there's just a few. So here is us riding up the gondola. First off, I start with some, some gondola activities. Emily, you're there. Ooh, that's Deborah, Lauren, Larry's wife. There's Larry, my friends. So we're heading up the heavenly gondola. This is the observation deck. See that? No line going back, guys. <laughs> so these are some pictures of the videos I just showed you. The crowd's now gone. Look at that, look at that picture. Isn't that great? Gondolas in the background. I am the selfie king. Thank you very much. So here's now the Tamarack base in the top of the gondola. Keep in mind, skiing or summer, you're walking downstairs to get down. That's the Tamarack Lodge. Beautiful lodge. Looks fairly new. It's been there since they built the gondola in 2005. And there's the rock climbing wall. And there's the better view of the beautiful lodge. And it's also one thing to do up there is just have lunch and hang out. The lodge had a good selection of beverages, good selection of food. And here is the Tamarack Express chairlift, a six-pack. Count them. There's five with room for one more. And you get to go, Mom, I couldn't believe the rockiness of these ski trails. I'm like, they must need three feet of powder to even start skiing there. I've, never, I've seen a lot of ski trails, but when they're rocky, you don't have to cut grass. I know at Killington, Vermont, where I worked for a summer, they brought goats in to cut the grass. So that's the famous state line. That is the thing to do there is to straddle the state line. Ropes courses. The ropes course and climb wall were not open because of COVID, but these are normal summer activities. Great for kids. As you see later in the pictures, we met a young family, and Bonnie and I helped out a woman with three kids. Because of size restriction, age restriction, here they are right here. Great kids. I took... Uh, my man, I forgot his name already, Paxton, Paxton. And you'll see a picture right here. I took Paxton so the Mugula could have all the kids up on one ride and not have to ride again or wait at the bottom and worry about our kids. So that's our photo gallery. Just a great time. That's just a taste of the activities you can do there. And thank you, Paxton and a wonderful mom. And we had a great ride together. And, and then, you know, to keep in mind when you do activities, they may have height and age restrictions, just like a ride at Disney or Universal. And the mountain coast is pretty intense, and you could be above eight to ride, but to take someone else with you, you have to be above 12. <laughs> and, you know, it's crazy. But, but thank you, Paxton, for riding these. It's a great time. All the activities at the top, mountain coaster, Tamarack Express chairlift, ropes courses, rock climbing, hiking trails. You can actually, on most days, Ride the chairlift up from the lodge. This is, again, at the top of the gondola. The gondola goes up to like a basin. What's a basin? It's where mountains meet, where many trails meet. So the lodge is there to hang out at. So when you're skiing, you only use that gondola, get to your hotel and back, and then you don't see it again all day. And then you don't you don't ski down to your to Heavenly Village. That is far separated from the lodges that you drive to. So the gondola is your way up and back. You ski back and forth from that lodge. In the summertime, you're right there. But you can hike right from off the gondola, those trails, or to the top on most days, you can hike from the top of the Tamarack Express chairlift, the six-pack chairlift, and get even higher and deeper into the you know, weeds there up there. The day we were there, we could not get off the chairlift and walk around. It was only right around. It was worth the view as you saw the pictures. Uh, but that on certain days in the summer, you could hike around there. And obviously for skiing, that's where you're going to go. So that's our activities that were on the mountain. I do want to end talking about, yes, Emily says, so cute. Yes, we had a great time. Emily, thanks for watching the show today. Great having you on commenting. And so wonderful having you part of our group. You were part of the VIP gondola group. The only ones that got up off the observation deck and talked to Tamara, <laughs> we are the coolest and I will say again, it was my idea. Now, when you get to the bottom, and we had a great time, right in Heavenly Village was our two restaurants. Give a shout out to State Line Brewery Company. Phenomenal. Check out my post on my David W. Hartman Instagram and Facebook page. And also uh, Kalani's, which I haven't posted. I'll post this weekend. 
Two great restaurants. Thank you for our host, Vail Resorts at Kalani's, Winter Ski and Sport, Mike and Sherry Agnew, and Sandy Gaudette. They did a great job this trip. And, guys, great choices in restaurants. They're right in the village in the base of Scandla, walking distance from State Line, from Harvey's, Harrah's, Lake Tahoe Resort. They're right next door. That's why these resorts in South Lake Tahoe are such great places to stay because you're right by this amazing complex. And kudos to Vail Resorts. I know American Ski Company built the gondola and then went out of business. Vail Resorts came in. They do own the world and skiing, and they own, they bought this and really have done a great job. Brought a Marriott to add villages with mini golf in the summer, ice skating in the winter. So many new shops and restaurants since I've been there in 2008. So kudos to Vail Resorts for doing a great job in the, in the city of State Line, California, doing a great job there. Grocery store, walking distance when you stay there, really phenomenal. So really right in the village, restaurants, bars, shops, mini golf in the summer, and ice skating in the winter, all right within walking distance of your resorts, either if you're at Harvey's, Harrah's, or uh, used to be a former Mrs. Suites, where I featured last week, which is uh, Lake Tahoe Resort. And that's more of a sweet resort we're staying at in January. Then, of course, if you're bored with the normal stuff, you got the casinos in the Nevada side. Just across the street from the Heavenly Gondola, a block away, is Harris and Harvey's and Caesars Entertainment now owns all those brands. Hard Rock. Uh, Hard Rock has their own casino. By the way, Hard Rock was by far the nicest, maybe smallest floor, cleanest, best bars by far. Check it out. Now, Mont Blue, I haven't gone in, but that's a higher-end resort, and I've heard good things. Just haven't gotten over there yet. I don't gamble. And then right on the strip in between these casinos is a, is a strip of restaurants. And check out Lucky Beaver. Have a great video on Instagram. And, my, again, my David Hartman Facebook page, uh, Facebook profile of their video of sorry, their ro rotating grill. Best burgers in town. They're called the Burger Bar. So thank you, Larry. My man, Larry, for pointing that out. Larry be on the show today, but he's still traveling out there. I'm so jealous. He hasn't left. So Excellent. So that's what's there to do there in a three-day trip. You don't have to leave Lake Tahoe between the neighborhood behind Harvey's and walking down the beach, between the Dixie Queen, between the Heavenly Village and the Heavenly Gondola. There is a hell of a lot to do in three days, but you got to get up the mountain, get on the mountain, get out hiking, and then watch my show from last week where I did a preview of all the activities you could do in the summertime. It is endless. And obviously hanging out in Emerald Bay, the place I'm at right now, this beautiful looking Emerald Bay, look to check it out. You know, that is also a place you can see uh, by car. Renting a car is recommended there because seeing the whole lake is very important. Before I go, I do want to talk about some comments. Some comments in the chat. Hey, check them out. Yeah, Malay says, thank you. Thank you, too. And then Christina, who we missed today at Snappers. We missed you. We saw Tony. Love you, David. Love you, too, Christina. Enjoy your time with your uh, mom in Sarasota. Appreciate you guys being on. Extra little long show today. We're talking about South Lake Tahoe, what to do in three days, emphasizing really two key activities and staying in Lake Tahoe. You don't have to go too far. It's a wonderful summertime destination. If you want to join us, I was a great ski group with the Florida Ski Council, January 22nd to 29, 2022. Go to floridaskicouncil.com or miamiskiclub.com if you're based in South Florida. And join us on this epic ski trip to Heavenly Mountain Resort. We're staying in the resorts I talked about the last two shows, right in safe South Lake Tahoe, walking distance from the Heavenly Mountain Gondola, and with the Epic Pass, the ability to ski North Star to the north or Kirkwood right by Heavenly, so diversity too. You guys have a fantastic Sunday. We'll talk to you next week from Walt Disney World for another feature resort tour. We will see you then.